So some of them are coming up, getting students to log in, technology, keeping them engaged, Zoom burnout, coming up with new material, attendance, uh, sorry, um, internet. Um, yeah, so a lot of these things we, we're working with as well. Um, technology, just some could be basic, not having internet access or getting them to log on. Uh, some of it's just attendance. Kids are not showing up like they used to. Uh, engagement seems to be another big one, participating. Yeah, so that's a lot. Lack of parental support, um, retention, mic issues. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of the things that we, we also are, are facing as well. Um, all right, well, thank you for that. So we're gonna start uh, with some, um, some of the tools that we can, we can share with you. And um, let's see if you, we tried this, we've done this workshop recently and we tried this um, and for many of the participants it didn't work, um, but we wanna be able to annotate on Zoom. So read these directions, go to view options and click on the upward facing uh, arrow, choose annotate and then pick text, draw or stamp. See if that works for you. Um, it may not work for you, but if you know another way to, to annotate with Zoom, feel free to share with the group or put it in the chat box. But for our first activity, we're gonna to need to be able to annotate. Is anyone having trouble with that? Okay, so I can't annotate. Uh, yeah, it looks like a lot of people are, are having trouble with that. Okay, some people, okay. So some people are, you, you are able to do it, that's good. All right, so, so yeah, this is Spectrogram. This is a, this is a warm up we do in person. Um, it's a lot of fun in person. It's where you have students stand, uh, you have a disagree on one side of the room, it may be in the middle and an agree on the other side. Then you ask a question or a statement and then you have each person physically stand what their answer is. So uh, for this remote format, we make um, a slideshow, I'm sorry, a slide and you can use, there's a bunch of formats you can use for this to create these slides, but you can still do spectrogram uh, remotely. And as you can see, people are putting where they stand on that. So the question is, um, do you like French fries or I like French fries, however you want to state it. And then someone can go over here, you know, they can write M for Matt, uh, they can do, uh, you know, they can just do a heart or a star. Uh, they can put their initials, but you get a sense of where people stand. And this is a great, simple way to engage students to get the conversation started. Uh, with something like Spectrogram, we, we want to um, structure it in a way so that we start small. You know, whether or not you like French fries, that's not really high stakes, but we can move up as we go, depending on where we want to take the lesson and something more high stakes or more risky, for example, you know, I think guns should be made illegal, right? And then you start to get a sense of people having, you know, stronger views, uh, which leads to great conversations. It's a great warm up to get students active, to get them engaged, especially as you move to those, those higher stakes questions, you're gonna get students who really wanna participate. They're gonna wanna, you know, turn their mic off and get involved in the conversation. Um, so this is always a lot of fun. Every time I've done this uh, in person or remote, I always get, um, a lot of uh, a lot of engagement it, it just sort of happens especially if I design my question uh, or questions you know for the group uh, something I think they'll like you know for example with middle school students I'll usually say something like um, you know seventh grade is too young to have a boyfriend or girlfriend right and they really <laughs> they really they really go for that question they have very strong feelings about that so um, you know, this is just a simple way to, to uh, engage your students and get things going. And this is uh, an example of something we adapted from in-person facilitation. And um, the, the, the facilitators you're about to see, the community school directors, they'll give you more examples of this and things that they've adapted from live to um, um, remote. And Whitney, I can't really see the chat box. So if there's any questions, feel free to interrupt me or Aaron or Preston or Shani. Um, all right. Let's see. So, um, as I mentioned, my slide is not changing here. Okay. So Google Jamboard, um, 
This is um, one of the um, jamboard.google.com. You can see the, the address down there. Uh, this is a very helpful uh, app that Google has added to all of its Google accounts. So if you have a Gmail, this, this Google Jamboard is there. Just like your email is there, your photos, all the things that come with your Google Gmail, this is there. And I suggest you give it a, a try if you haven't before. It's a very easy platform to make really fun slides. You can add, it's really user-friendly. You can add pictures, you can add graphs, you can add, uh, you know, you can color on it. You can do a lot of stuff uh, to make fun, engaging slides, or even, you know, as an interactive format with your students if you want to work on something together, you know, in an art club, et cetera. So um, this is one thing that I personally used, Google Jamboard. Check it out, take a look at it. Um, and also, if, if anyone in uh, any of the participants has something they want to add, by all means, go, go to the chat, uh, give us some other suggestions that we can see as a group. Because um, I know this is definitely not the only one. Some of the teaching artists I've worked with have made other suggestions. So there's a lot of great stuff out there right now that you can use. Um, and feel free to suggest to the group if you know one that you've used and that works well for you. Here is uh, some facilitation tips from one of our teachers, our teaching artists. Her name is Miss Savannah. Um, she works at a couple of our schools, uh, one of them in Inwood, and she does a visual arts club. Um, and she, she's really taken uh, some of these new platforms to another level that makes her engagement, uh, her, her online work really engaging. So um, let's take a listen for a moment. Um, Matt, we can't hear Savannah. Oh, you can't hear Savannah. Okay. Um, I can hear her just fine. Yeah, Matt, you probably have to just set up your audio when you're sharing your screen. So if you go back to um, options, I think at the top. Okay. All right, the volume is up. You probably have to come Whitney, um, can you hear her? Sorry about that. Can you hear her now? No, I can't, unfortunately. All right, you're as the co-host. Go to share screen and there should be a little box at the bottom that says share sound with video or something like that, that you just click on. All right. Can you hear now? No. No? If you unplug no. the headphones, it should work. Okay. All right, bear with me, folks. One second. Let me see why this isn't working. Okay, can you hear her now? Oh, man, that's frustrating because I can hear her just fine. Um, Matt, we can drop that YouTube link maybe into the chat box, and that way other people can open it on their computers and All right, look let's at it. Try that. Let me see. Oh, uh, Nigel's also suggesting that when after you've uh, disconnected your headphones, then click the sound option that Aaron was talking about. That might help. Sorry, say that again, Whitney. Um, Nigel said if you disconnect your headphones and then click on that sound option Aaron was talking about, that might uh, give you the option now. Same system. Can you hear me, Whitney? Yes. I can hear you. Yeah? Yeah. Can you hear Savannah? It's not playing. So now I can't hear. Okay, sorry about that. So when I unplug, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can. But could you hear her at any point? No, the video wasn't playing though. Okay, all right. Well, then we'll just have to come back to that. Um, sorry about that, folks. I'm not sure what happened because it's working just fine for me. And I tried it when I unplugged my headphones as well and it, I could still hear it. So I'm not sure why it's not going to your screen. Um,
All right, well, well, we'll see if we can come back to that later. All right, I apologize for that. Um, all right, elementary school. So first we have, as I mentioned, Whitney Arnold, CSD from PS152 in Brooklyn. Okay, Whitney, take it away. Hi, thanks, Matt. Um, so my first tip, as Matt said, I'm from PS152 in Brooklyn. Um, I'm actually share a building with Aaron, the next person that's gonna be speaking about elementary schools. And we can go to our first tip. Oh, Matt, you can go to the next slide, or I can also technically the next slide. Thank you. Um, so our first tip is we're doing the worst first, which is something that adults say a lot, like let's just get the worst out of the way. So we're gonna get that out of the way with my worst tip, or my worst um, topic of tips, I guess. It's one of the best tips, I think. But having consequences in place is one of the best things you can do for any remote instruction. Um, having boundaries with your students is really, really important because they know where that line is. One of the most difficult things I've experienced and a bunch of my trainers have experienced is getting that engagement, right? And that engagement comes from um, them not getting distracted, them not looking at something else on their computer, them not uh, only chatting in the chat box about something completely off topic and not paying attention to what you're saying. So this is one of my favorite features and one of my favorite consequences slash boundaries to have in place at the start of the meeting. Oh, sorry, Matt. Did I accidentally do that? Could we go back to the last one? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so when you use Google Meets, and you can do this on Zoom as well, uh, but for our school, we use Google Meets the most. Down at the bottom, when you are hosting a meeting, there is a little blue shield. And that blue shield does wonders because that blue shield allows you to change the security preferences for your Meet. So you can take away the share screen privileges and you can take away the chat sharing privilege, the chat privileges. And that is one of the biggest um, things for my trainers that reins everybody back in. They say, okay, that's our first warning. We get to three, that chat privilege is getting taken away for the rest of the meeting. And they straighten up super quick. So that's one of my favorite ones. There's also a couple of different um, other security features that are really important that you get from that blue shield, um, as you can see on the screen. But the chat privileges is the biggest one um, that we use. Okay, we can go to the next slide, Matt. My second tip is to embrace the chatty Kathy, because a lot of the times, I know for myself, when I'm not around people that much and I finally get around people, it is just like a mile a minute word vomit. I'm just going, 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 going. And that's because our socialization has completely changed and it's completely changed for the kids as well. So if we budget our time saying, okay, there's gonna be 30 minutes of instruction, 30 minutes of activity time, we start getting really frustrated when the kids are kind of like constantly interrupting and they're unmuting themselves and they're talking to each other, they're chatting in the chat box. So I say budget in for that time. So if your lesson is 30 minutes, maybe chop it down to 10 to 15 minutes and allow for that room for them to socialize, for them to, you know, just have a conversation because giving them that time is just as important as a structural time considering how much of that time they're really losing in the normal day. So that's something that my trainer said has really helped them and it makes them a lot less nervous. It makes the kids a lot less nervous and it gets everybody on an even playing field to start off the class. We can go to the next tip, uh, Matt. The third tip is let's get physical. So one of my favorite things to do with the kids is to set up uh, physical cues. So rather than just saying, if everyone can hear me, put your thumbs up or, um, you know, turn on your cameras and something simple. I like to keep the cameras on and then keep them physically engaged the whole time. So like if I'm teaching with them, I'm said, if everybody could hear that, zoom in and the kids all get really, really close to the camera. Okay, zoom back out. If everybody heard me, go ahead and put your spirit fingers up, spirit fingers up. Okay, did everybody hear me do a little dance? Everybody dance if they heard me. So I keep things super physical and the kids stay really, really involved. And one of the games that we do to introduce that is assignment says. So we give them their physical cues that that's, you know, dancing, happy fingers, zooming in, zooming out, um, hiding, which is they get completely out of the camera and they come back in. And we do assignment says, like Simon says, everybody hide. And they all hide out of the screen. Simon says, everybody do their jazz fingers. So they do that. 
And then that way they know what the cues are and they play that game and they get really physical with it. And then we're able to use those cues throughout the lesson to keep them physically engaged and get those mental juices kind of consistently flowing. All right, Matt, we can go to the next one. Tip four is non assignment -y assignments. So one of our favorite things to do is really utilize that Google Classroom for things that are not just in the actual Zoom session or a Google Classroom section, uh, Google Meet session, sorry, because they have so much screen time as it is and getting them off the screen and doing things that can be printed out or things that they can have an assignment that's not homework assignment, but it's a little bit more of a game or it's um, something that they can make with their hands and then post a picture of it. Um, doing riddles, conversation starters, that these help in a couple different ways because it gets them off the computer and participating in something with their family. A lot of our families say we really like these assignments that you're posting because it allows us to have something to do with our kids that's off screen, but it also gives our trainers a much better sense of what are the students interested in, what should I bring up in class, um, and just get a pulse of where they're at. Um, so like, for example, Christopher says, what's your favorite character? And this is, a, they, they comment on it, and then it's also an assignment, so they actually have a lot more responses on the assignment page. And he'll post something like, what is your favorite movie? And based on those things, he's actually able to frame his lesson on the things that the students are really interested in. So it gets them talking and discussing off screen, and it also gives him a context for what to frame his lesson around so that they are more engaged. And those are my top four tips for me personally <laughs> at my school. All right, thank you so much, Whitney. Next up, we have, let's see here. All right, Miss Finley. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Um, Happy New Year, everybody. First of all, it's 2021. Okay, so let's just acknowledge that we're in a new year. <laughs> so <laughs> happy holidays to everybody. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, again, I am from PS315 in Flatbush, Brooklyn. I share a building with Whitney. So a lot of the things um, that she was saying we do together collaboratively just maybe just a little bit of difference so here are my top five tips for virtual retention for elementary school scholars thank you matt so tip number one create a routine right who doesn't have a routine we wake up we brush our teeth we hop in the shower or we wake up, we go for a run, we wake up, we have a cup of joe, or we read the newspaper or watch the news. Everybody has routines. Same thing for our kids, right? We wanna create a routine so they kinda know what they're walking into every class. Thank you, Matt. So for um, my clubs, we start off with a warm up or a check in that could look like something physical like Whitney was saying or like just a quick check in question. Um, thank you, Matt. We could go into our main activity after that. Then we move into our um, we implement processing questions in which the leadership program uses the experiential learning cycle, which is very effective. It gets our scholars really thinking about why <laughs> period. <laughs> okay. And then lastly, we have a close out or a wind down. Okay, so thank you, Matt. This might look like so I have two videos here. My first video, we're going to show a short clip of, um, I would suggest or I would recommend for my kindergarten through second grade students, which is just to shake your, shake, shake your silly out. That's a tongue twister. So if you can <laughs> click on that for me, that, and I want you to follow along, guys. Okay, this is the interactive part. I hope this time um, works. If, if, if we can... <laughs> If not, y'all going to have me sing. <laughs> All right, can you hear it? <laughs> no, oh, that's right. Oh, okay, great. so it's okay because I know this video like the back of my hands. So you can turn your cameras on or off, it's fine. What you would do is you're going to shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake. Come on, 
Come on, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your night away or something like that, right? So that, <laughs> that really gets them moving and it gets that energy out right before it's, it's time to center, the set, center themselves and, and really hone in on the day's lesson. So for my more advanced students or my older students, a closeout for third through fifth graders might look like a simple meditation for like five minutes, right? And as you see, my tone dropped. And so we get really serious because I want them to focus. Um, I got this clip off of YouTube, just type in meditation for kids and you can have them do it with me if you're sitting, that's great. If you can ground your feet on the floor, this is for everybody right now. You're feeling a little tense, your shoulders are up. I want you to relax them, okay? If you can, I would love for you to close your eyes. And we are going to inhale through the nose for five counts and exhale through the mouth for five counts. I want you to do that with me. Closing your eyes, relaxing, feet on the floor, grounded, sit up nice and straight. Here we go. And inhale through the nose. One, two, three, four, five. And exhale through the mouth. Five, four, three, two, one. So that is what a closeout might look like, okay, for meditation. Thank you so much. All right, Matt. So my yes. tip one, create a routine. Create a routine, create a routine. Tip two is incorporate scholar buy-in. What is scholar buy-in? Erin, what is scholar buy-in? It's as simple as having options of a one and done project or a type of activity to do on any given day so that your scholars feel like they are structuring their class and they have ownership of their club or class, right? So, um, for example, next slide, my visual arts class could look like option A, leaf people. Option B, tissue paper tie-dye, okay? So here's where you get interactive with me. So if you go to your reactions where the little happy face is, I want you, if you were in Miss Erin's visual arts virtual class, right? I want you to put a, a smiley face if you would want to do leaf people today and a heart if you would want to do tissue paper tie-dye. Happy face for leaf people, tissue paper for tie-dye. You can use your reactions or you can go in the chat box. Ready, set, go. Awesome, I see some hearts. Okay, I see hearts, I see hearts. Okay, tissue, and people are annotating, that's awesome. Okay, so it looks like today we're gonna to be doing tissue paper tie-dye, okay? <laughs> so awesome, that's another way for you to kind of get interactive with them and for them to have scholar buy-in. It's my tip two. Next slide, please. My tip three for virtual retention for elementary school scholars. Establish roles and responsibilities. Establish roles, I appreciate your hearts. Establish roles and responsibilities. Assign responsibilities, assign the role, right? You assign the role and then you explain the responsibility. For example, have your staple scholar or your star student or your student with the best attendance be responsible for bringing a new friend each week and or have the scholar who is having a difficult time staying focused choose the background music to the activity schedule for that day right and that i i can't tell you the joy that brings them oh my god i got to i get to listen to my favorite song while we're doing something while we're doing a uh, tie-dye tissue paper how much fun is that right 
And then that will bring in, guess what we did in Miss Erin's visual arts class today? Oh my gosh, we got to listen to uh, Ariana Grande. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so scholar buy-in, establish the roles. Um, another, uh, next slide, please. What these roles could look like are a sound engineer, a questioner, a, a note taker, a brain break leader, that would be my, my personal favorite, <laughs> a calendar captain, a joke teller, and a timekeeper. My scholars love keeping time, especially to start on time. We start at 2.45, at 2.44, you're getting a text message saying, where's the link for club? Okay, that's retention, right? Okay, next, next slide, thank you. So tip four is keep it short and sweet, y'all, right? We're not in college, we're not in a, a lecturing class, we, no, okay? These are kids, these are babies, <laughs> okay? Thank you, Matt. So keep it short and sweet. Um, keep your instructional talk time to a minimal, one to two minutes breaking down the instructions in sections. This is similar to what Whitney was saying. Keeping the attention of elementary age scholars is difficult, we know that. So it is imperative to do more interactive activities than to be lecturing about the actual activity. Hashtag tell and show. You see what I did there? Hashtag tell and show. So if I could have one volunteer to read that quote for me, one volunteer, can I get somebody? I'm gonna volunteer you, okay, Miss Megan. Hi, I'm actually Miss Nafisa, how are you? You do a phenomenal job. Oh, thank you. Not a problem. Keep it short and sweet. Keep your instructional talk time to a minimal minute. Oh, Miss, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you just read the quote for me? Oh, my bad. I'm tripping. It's okay. Um, <laughs> tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. Listen, I love the enthusiasm at the end of that. Okay. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me. And I learn. Ben Franklin. Oh, I can't. Let that sink in, guys. Let that sink in. Next, <laughs> next slide. Thank you, Miss Megan. Oh, I'm not Miss Megan, but you posing as Miss Megan. <laughs> tip five. Tip five. Be you guys. This is my last tip. Be you. Be who you are. When you are your most authentic self and are able to exemplify and exude the confidence with who you are, that may lead to captivating engagement and, build, and building long lasting relationships with your scholars. I'm still, if I walk down the street of Bedford or Glenwood and I see somebody I had uh, that graduated two years ago, they remember me. Why? Because I'm me. I miss Erin. <laughs> yes, next, next slide. Thank you, um, Matt. So before I was a community school director, I was actually a facilitator and I have um, an arts background. I'm a dancer by training. So next clip, don't play the video. Don't play the video. Just go to... Oh, let's just play it automatically. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, this is how I would introduce myself to my class. So about Miss Erin. We can go back to the video after I tell you who I am. <laughs> so I'm guessing you can't hear that either. No, we can't. <laughs> it's okay. Awesome I'll job. tell them the song in a minute. Uh, yes, awesome. There we go. About Miss Erin. So I was raised in Atlanta, Georgia, if you can't tell by the accent. My favorite color is cobalt blue. I majored in dance for high school and college. 
I studied at Alvin Ailey in Manhattan, New York, woo woo. And I have literally, fun fact, bumped in to Morgan Freeman on the streets, no joke. Literally bumped into him, okay. <laughs> So that is what I would tell my class to kind of get, oh, you did what? Wait, who is Morgan Freeman? Oh, Atlanta. Ooh, now show us what you can do, right? And that's what the clip is about. That was actually recorded in my studio at PS315, which I love. The background, oh, can I hear it? No, the background music is um, right there. For You by Donny Hathaway, choreographed by the legend himself, Alvin Ailey. Um, and so that's how I get my clubs um, intrigued and engaged. And that's how I do retention, <laughs> virtually and in person. All right. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Miss Finley. That was fantastic. And you do retention quite well, I must say. All right, next up, Miss Shawnee Boxel from Brooklyn, IS228. It's gonna help us with middle school. Yes, hi guys. Can you hear me well? We can hear you. My computer was having a whole meltdown this morning. I was freaking out. Um, so uh, my name is Shawnee Boxel again. I've been working about 15 years with kids and eight years with middle school, which I thought I would never do. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, I like to call middle school uh, the awkward years. Um, that you can go to the next slide. <laughs> so we were all there, right? We were awkward, weird, little middle school kids. Um, and there's a, a, a movie in a book series called The Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And the main character says about middle school, let me just say for the record that I think middle school is the dumbest idea ever invented. Got kids like me who haven't hit growth spurt yet mixed in with these gorillas who need to shave twice a day. And that's basically like what we're dealing with, right? They come in from fifth grade, they barely even cross the street by themselves and they're leaving some of them shaving. So we are the keepers of the uh, beginning of the adolescent pubescent years where they just don't know what to do with themselves and we're trying to figure out what to do with them right so the main question is how do you keep a middle school kid engaged what is it that they want well you know what they have no idea what they want they they don't it changes every day every week um, they might like something but their friend likes something else so they're gonna switch to what their friend likes because peer pressure Right, so they don't they don't know what they like, and but in in some cases, things don't change. Right, they they figure out like they have have the same trends, and different schools have different things. Like what might be popular at my school, another middle school has not even heard of. Right, so it's very specific to your kids. Because so you can't just assume that because you might have a middle school kid, and at your kid's school they like doing this, that is going to translate to your school. Every school is so different. Every school has its own culture. Uh, Matt, you can go to the next one. So I like to say, give them what they like, not what you like. We love to say, when I was a kid, we played outside all day. When I was a kid, you know, we didn't sit in front of a video game. When I was a kid, we liked jumping rope. Well, you know what, they don't care. They don't care at all what we did when we were kids. We are ancient to them. We might as well have one foot in the grave. They could care less. What we did as kids is not cool. It's not fun. They don't want to do it. Even if what they're doing is some rebranded version of what we did when we were kids. We all know that, right? They, they listen to songs on the, on the radio. It's like, oh, did you hear this new song? And you know, we're like, the song is so not new. But in their head, it's a new song. There's a song. Um, uh, can't keep your eyes off. Like, still, there's some new version of it now, right? That Frankie Valley sang. And I was just like, it's not a new song, but whatever. They put a techno beat to it, so it's new to them and they love it. So don't tell them that, you know, it's from the 70s because they'll stop listening to it. Um, but just ask them what they want, right? Voice and choice is the big thing in middle school. Usually in elementary school, um, they're pretty scheduled because, you know, that's just the way it is. 
the little kids have a schedule, the older kids have a schedule, but they're not so much picking everything that they get to do. So when they get to middle school, give them even more autonomy and let them choose their whole schedule. So Google Forms uh, has become my new best friend, I'm sure has, uh, as it's been for everybody. Um, so when I put my schedule together, um, I put it in a Google form and at the end of the form, I always say, and in person too, we have a, a, a paper form. Is there anything that's not on this form that you would like? Is there any club that we're not doing that you'd like to do? Um, and we always get suggestions. And sometimes it's things that we just can't, um, you know, you'd be amazed what they come up with. But, you know, if there's a way to make it work, um, I think they really appreciate that and knowing that we're really listening to them. Kids want to know that people are listening to them and value their opinion. We do a lot of sit down and be quiet and I'm going to tell you what's going to be best for you and we're not listening to them. And when, when after school is something that is not mandatory and middle school is, is that start of that pushback stage of, you know what, I don't need to come to this if you're not going to listen to me kind of thing then we, we really need to take into account what we're saying to them and what we're asking of them. Um, definitely do check-ins with the kids. Um, go go into the in-person, go to their classes, join the activity with them, um, even, even uh, virtually go into those Google Meets. If they're doing fitness, get, it, get in with them. If they're dancing, dance with them do the art project with them. So they know that you're invested in what they're doing too, and you know what they're doing. So if they come back to you later and say, oh, Ms. Shani, you know, um, when we were in art class uh, earlier and you said, you're, you're building connections and relationships. Also be flexible with your clubs. Clubs can start as one thing and kids get bored because they get bored easily. And you're gonna have to morph that thing into something else. I think even more so now because their their attention spans are just shot as as we all are, right? They've been on the Zoom all day, and we're and we're trying to get them pull them to stay a little longer with us. So um, in person, I had a Beyblade club because one of the students came and asked me for a Beyblade club out of the blue, and I said. Well, if you can um, get me at least five more kids, we can look into a day where we can start the club. He came back to me with eight more names. By the time we started the club, we had almost 20 kids. And that was in the span of a week, just because one kid came and asked. So they, it was great. They were doing it for a while, and then kids started to fall off. So I said, okay, well, what's going on? What's the problem? I asked the kid who asked for the club, you know, what's going on? You know, less and less of your friends are coming. And he's like, oh, we're kind of getting bored now. Now this is like week seven. This has not been going on very long, right? Um, so I said, well, what else do you want to do? I don't want you guys to stop coming. They wanted to play Yu-Gi-Oh cards, which I didn't even know was still a thing. I didn't even know Beyblades was still a thing, but whatever, you know, things come back around. So they started playing Beyblade clubs and then somebody brought Pokemon clubs. I said, listen, if, if you like it, I love it. Do you want to play Beyblade and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh? You go ahead and play Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh if, if that makes you happy. And the kids were happy and they kept coming. Um, we also right now have a jewelry making club online. Um, they were doing their jewelry one day. A kid started talking about crocheting and now it's jewelry making slash crochet club because you like it, I love it. What's wrong with doing some crochet too? It's in the same fashion, uh, jewelry making uh, umbrella. So why not? They wanna do it, that's gonna keep them there a little longer. So let's do it. We also have semesters at my school. Um, I find, unless they really, really love something, they're about 10 weeks to try something new. Um, and so we have fall, winter, spring. And the kids get really like, they know at the end of this 10 weeks, if I don't really like this, I don't have to stay here. I can go try something else, right? Instead of I'm in this chess club and that's all that's being offered to me until June. So I'm just gonna stop coming. So you get a little bit more buy-in. They know they can switch their schedule. They don't have to stick with specific classes. They can try something else. I, I, I think it really gives them a more incentive to stay. And um, much, much needed nowadays is the club care packages. Um, we all saw in the spring where we started, we started trying to do after school and kids don't have, we work with low income kids. They don't have charcoal at home. They don't have 
watercolor paints. They don't have these things. So, you know, it was a struggle just trying to find, okay, what do you have in your house to make this club work? So as soon as I finished setting my schedule, I started ordering things in bulk. I got a bunch of different Ziploc bags in different uh, sizes, and I started throwing together an art club kit, a jewelry club kit, a steam club kit that was available for them to get at the school. Uh, you can go to the next one, Matt. So out of all of these things, um, Roblox is the biggest club I have. Um, if you know any kids between the age of six um, and 13, I'd say, they know what Roblox are and they are very, very obsessed with it. Um, I have a 13 year old who's been playing it for a couple of years and that's all I hear about. And how can she earn more Robux, luck, bucks or whatever, because that's how you change your avatar and build things. Um, it's a whole, whole thing that I don't think is going away anytime soon. Um, you can go to the next one, Matt. So what is it basically? It's a multiplayer online role-playing game. That's the, you know, official title. Um, it's just a game they like to play. But what is great about it is, one, it's free. Anybody can sign up. You can play it on a computer, a tablet, or a phone. So it doesn't matter what kind of device uh, your kids have, they can sign in. There's over 200 games to play and they're always adding new games. So you're never going to run out of things for the kids to play. And any staff that you have that plays on a Xbox or a PlayStation can do this. It's not hard. I am terrible at, at video games and I tried it over the summer with my daughter and I'm not gonna say I was great at it, but I was able to figure it out. So if I can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. You can go to the next one, Matt. So here's the best practices for it. Definitely create a private server. Um, an average server is about $5 for four weeks of play, but there are free servers as well. You don't have to pay for every server. And what a private server means is that you're not playing with the rest of the general public. It's just the kids in your club, which they already know what a private server is. So if you say you're setting up private servers, they feel very exclusive and very like, oh, we're the only ones that are gonna be in this game. They love it. Um, definitely keep your Google Meet or your Zoom open while you're playing. Um, on, on Roblox, you can only type to communicate. So this way you can, if, if, you, if you don't have your Google Meet or Zoom open, it's much harder to keep track of uh, what the kids are doing. And plus they get to socialize while they're playing the game, which they like to do. Like the whole, if, if you start this club and you go in during a meeting, it, you're not even, they're going to be talking, 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 like they just talk the entire time. Um, give them the voice and choice to choose their own games. There's so many that there's, everybody's going to have their own favorite, but definitely just um, let, let them all, the first couple of weeks of class, let them all bring the games that they're interested in and they can post it in the Google Classroom. The kids can have time if they don't know the games to look at them. You have the time to look at them because every game, you cannot approve every game. Is there some games that has uh, shooting and stuff like that because anybody can create a game, but I'll get to that later. Um, so you have to make sure that you're looking at the game before you uh, purchase it. And also there's some games that allow 20 players and there's some allow, some games that only allow six players. So you have to make sure that you're, you're checking it out before uh, you agree to it. Um, also let the, the students share. There's some kids that play this all the time, night and day, and there's some kids that are just getting into it. So there's certain games that kids are just trying to figure out. So if you let them, the kids who are just trying to figure it out, instead of playing a game for the whole club, let, let part of the club be, I'm having problems with this game and I don't know how to beat it. I don't know how to win. Let them screen share and the other kids can show them, you know, no, 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 go over here, go over here. And they, lo they love it. They love telling somebody else something that they know. So give them that, that title, give them that uh, authority to say like, you know, teacher, don't worry about this. I'm gonna show my friend how to, how to play this game. Um, and then you can take it to the next level. Um, Roblox can seem like a game where it's just silly. Um, and when I tell you, if you don't know, it's like, like Atari graphics. Like the graphics are so basic, 
but they love it, love it. Um, and, you know, as adults looking at it, we might be like, this is so ridiculous, and they're not really getting anything out of it. But Roblox is not, not stupid, and they have um, created um, lesson plans. If you go on roblox.com, they have lesson plans there. Um, if you go to learn and explore, there's math games. There's games that is just exploring countries. So like your avatar goes on a plane and can go to China, it can go to France, and you can build lessons around that. You can also create your own game. And that's for kids that I would say a little bit older that might have a little bit of coding experience and your, your uh, teacher will have to have a little bit of coding experience too. But they can create a game and then share it with their group and then share it out to the school. And, and that, that'll take, that, that's a, a, a lot of months to go into it. But the kids, like I said, they love Roblox. So if you have older kids, and I would say even into high school because um, Roblox uh, creators also get paid. There's a whole, you know, that goes into gaming and game design. So it seems very simple at the very beginning, but you can take it to be so much more with your kids. And the buy-in is pretty easy. As, as soon as you say, we're gonna have a starter Roblox club, you're good to go. Thank you, Matt. Mishani. Very, very well done. I appreciate it, Mishani. Um, all right, next up, we have Mr. Preston Graham from Cass High School in Brooklyn. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So as um, Matt said, I'm from Cultural Academy for the Arts and Sciences High School, which is located in Brooklyn. And um, high school is a very different creature. So I had to be really, very creative with what I do with the students, especially being online. Um, with the first slide, I'm showing that there's, uh, I, I started at Instagram about two years ago. Now more than ever, the Instagram has been a lifesaver because now I can let the kids know what's going on in the school. Um, we just had a spirit week in December, so I told them each day, this is what's going on in spirit week. And I said, if I, you know, if I keep going on the, on the Instagram, are you guys going to participate? And they said, yeah, we're going to follow, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And they've been coming through. So I think that's like, their biggest thing right now is Instagram, TikTok. Um, I just started. Uh, I just started TikTok. I'm still trying to learn TikTok, so I, I would say that that's the one that they go on the most. But I'm still learning, so until I learn, I'm not going to really publish that. But that'll be the next thing that I go into because I know that a lot of my students are on TikTok. And this is a great way for high school students to just know what's going on in the school do funny things from myself or, or the uh, teachers and the staff who always love to participate. Um, it's been really great, especially now that you know we're doing everything virtually. Um, also, I have Remind. So I don't know if you guys know what Remind is, but it is a texting service that you can text in bulk. So in Remind, I have different categories. I have the parents, I have the staff, I have um, some of the students, and um, I uh, also have just like just just a little bit of the staff. So like you can make different categories into Remind. And I did get permission from some of the parents to have their students' numbers so I can text them in bulk and let them know what's going on. It's all about communication with the students. They they have so many different means of communication and everybody is just doing everything on their phone, on their computers. We had to know exactly how we can get in contact with them, and these have been the best ways to get them. You can go to the next slide, Matt. So when you're in your session, you want to communicate your agenda. The kids want to know what they're doing, especially high school kids. Why are we here? What are we doing? I know that this is mural arts class, but what does that mean? They want to know exactly what's happening. So you you say, hey, I'm going to start off with the warm up. And the main activity is I want right now, let's paint something that we can put in the school once we're back into the school. And then you have your closing. So the kids want to know exactly what's going on. So they're, they're prepared. What do we need to have? You need to make sure that the communication of the agenda is very, very clear with these kids or else you're gonna lose them. And being that we're in high school, they don't have to be here. And now that we're virtual, they definitely don't have to be here. So they, they wanna know exactly what's going on. Is this worth my time? If it's not, I'm off. If it is, all right, I'm here. But you gotta start off with a pop. You gotta, you gotta say, hey, this is what we're doing today. This is uh, how we're gonna affect, you know, you know we're at home now, but once we get back into school, we'll be able to put all your art projects into that school. So 
it's just it's just communicating as much as possible to the students always works. Asking for feedback. Now, some of my colleagues already said this. Sometimes you just want to get their attention, especially with high school students. Um, you want like a call and response. Hey, if you're still on, can you just send me something in the chat? Um, can you do a thumbs up and thumbs down? And sometimes I can I can say, hey, just do a thumbs up on here. If you're not going to uh, turn on your computer, I mean, excuse me, turn on your cameras and just give me a thumbs up. Let me know you're still here. I'm not talking to myself. Or turn on your cameras. Sometimes that works. A lot of times it doesn't. I'm not going to lie to you. But uh, uh, students, I find that once I'm a little more real with them than they can be real with me, sometimes I will just be a little ridiculous and pop on with a do rag. And I'm like, if I have my do rag on, then I can watch whatever you have on. What do you have on? Like a do rag, a bonnet. I just want to see your face. I want to see a smiling face that happened to me since last March. Just turn them on for a moment. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. A lot of times it has. But you know that's just one way to make sure that you you have their attention and they're still with you. Look at the next slide, Matt. Discover their interests. Um, I did a lot of polling before uh, we started this September. I wasn't that savvy in doing polling online um, when we first went into the pandemic, unfortunately. So I had to learn a lot of things during that time and. I do a lot of Zoom polls. Um, Google Forms is your friend. Google Forms is your friend. I'm sure you're probably using it already, but um, it seems like the, the shorter that you make it, especially for high school students, the more likely you'll get a response from them. Um, I also do like little town halls with the students. So sometimes I try to get the teachers included on that, uh, the principal, if you can get that, you know, if you can get that participation from them, and let them know that, hey, the students just want to ask some questions. They want to know what's going on, or they're saying it's too much work. And if you can explain why you're giving them work, and this other teacher is giving them work, and this is going on, sometimes it makes it a lot easier for the students to understand. Um, also, a spectrogram. Uh, Matt did it in the beginning. A spectrogram, he did, um, I like french fries. I'll do a spectrogram just to get their attention and say, hey, which group do you like better? Do you like um, or, or, or which rapper do you like better? You like Migos or you like Pop Smoke? And then, they'll, you know, I got to ask them to do something that'll get their attention. Like, oh, okay, all right. Oh, oh yeah, I like Migos. I like, and then it'll become a whole different thing and they can go into a whole tangent. Let them go into the tangent, but bring it back. But spectrograms work really, really well with students. And right now I'm doing a weekly link up. I started this in October with the secretary of my school. The weekly link up is just to give them information, just for them to say, hey, I'm tired from school. This is happening and that's happening. I have at least about 25 to 33 students that come on every week just to talk for 45 minutes. And we, you know, we play games, we um, we talk about what's going on in the school. We we just had like a 12 days of giveaways type thing. It's it really works out to do this link up after school and we do it directly after school. My school ends at two o'clock. So we start at 2.15 and we go into three o'clock and it's been great. Like if you can get that buy-in from the students and let them know that, hey, this is just a time that we can just have fun and there's no extras that's going into it. it, it it's worked for me. I say try it and I wouldn't just say try it just with high schools. I will try it with all schools. Um, you can go to the next slide, Matt. Create a clear agenda. Now, I said this before, um, during your sessions, sometimes you're on your clear path and they will veer off to the left. You gotta allow flexibility. You have to allow flexibility and you have to be able to be in the conversation with them. If they're having a conversation with each other and you know, with high school students, sometimes they can go a little, little to the left. You wanna bring it back, but also you don't want to censor them too much. And what I, what I mean by that is, you don't want to cut off the conversation. You want to gear it towards a learning a learning curve. You have to be as personable as possible. Um, I, I do like to build relationships with my students. Um, I have the I have the the advantage that I've already built a, a lot of the relationships with the students that are in the school before the pandemic, and I'm able to bring them in and say, Hey, we have some new freshmen. Um, I would like you to peer with this freshman and, and build a relationship with them and let them know how the school um, school motto is or, or just how the school is running. Having that relationship with those students has definitely helped me have a relationship with the new students who have come in that I've never even met uh, face to face. 
So just um, make sure that you're going with that relationship that you have with the students and follow your agenda, but allow flexibility. Next slide, Matt. So as I was saying, find those students that, um, that you can relate to. Find those students that can be an ambassador. Find those students that uh, are, I won't say popular, but, but those students who, who other students will look up to. And I, luckily, like I said, I already have the relationship with some of the students that I'm like, hey, you're my star student. I need you to be this, I need you to be that. Um, as Aaron was saying, the students love to have responsibility. They love to have responsibility. So if you give them responsibility, they're going to take it on and they're going to go and run with it. And it's one of the best things that I find has worked during this whole virtual thing that we're into right now. Include the students in the planning. Um, I think Shani was saying it as well. Include them in the planning. Hey, uh, what do you guys want to do? These are the things that I'm thinking that we can do for the year. These are the things that have worked before. But once again, to do a poll, what do you want to do? If it's possible, I'm going to make it happen because that will be the thing that they show up for. And once again, these high school students don't have to be there. So I do want to make sure that I'm giving them something that they want and still going by the structures of what's needed from the company. If you have not been in the school before, I say ask the teachers, ask the staff, as the, the principal, um, who they would recommend, anyone who has had a relationship with the students before, I would say at, go up to them and had, ask them or, or you know, call, call them or contact them, Zoom them, Google, uh, Google Meets them. Hey, who are the students that I can reach out to that may be able to help me? Um, even though I've built this relationship, I still went back to some of the staff and said, I need to just make sure that I'm, I'm using all my resources to make sure that the students are coming into class and they're also coming into my after school. So make sure you build a relationship with not just the students, but the staff as well, because it's gonna be very important for that, um, for that relationship to help you with some of the students as well. You can go to the next slide, Matt. And I just wanted to say, there was one more thing that I wanted to point out. In the high school, it seems that um, a lot of the students are just looking for communication. So if there's any way, like a, a weekly link up, or um, a town hall or anything to get them talking as much as possible, it's gonna, it's gonna work. It's going to be the, the best thing for you. Try to have some sort of communication weekly, excuse me, communication weekly with the students as much as possible. That's all I have to say. Thank you everybody. All right, thank you so much, Preston. All right, Aaron, Whitney, Shani, and Preston, excellent job. Thank you for all those wonderful tips and tools uh, some of them overlap for the different grade levels and some of them are unique. Um, so now we want to open it up to the group. Are there any questions, observations? Um, you can ask a specific question to one of our facilitators or maybe you just have a general question and you can figure out who the best person to answer that is. Feel free to unmute yourself uh, and speak up or if you want to use the chat, um, you can try that as well. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, so I have a question to um, all the facilitators. How is attendance for you guys? Because everything that you guys are talking about sounds great. And um, I kind of, I, I run an um, elementary uh, program. And, you know, I do have a schedule that we follow. We do clubs, you know, we do leadership, we do literacy, we do STEAM. But, you know, and we do a lot of activities and you know to try to keep the kids engaged but how how even though they're doing all these things how is attendance like how effective is attendance for you guys i don't know if you understand my question yeah that's a great question uh aaron whitney shawnee preston you want to take a shot um i think so aaron you want to go uh you first <laughs> um attendance has been pretty good um, considering that we're doing virtual and considering it's also high school. Um, like I said, I, I gave a lot of the students what they wanted as far as the after school programming. And I, you know, I kind of empowered them to let me know what, what they wanted. So um, we have a culinary program. We have about 15 to 18 students who are consistent. We have the mural arts program, which we have about three to five students who are consistent, which I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but considering it's virtual, it's not too bad. 
Um, we have a young women's group um, where we have about five to 10 students who, who come. So uh, although we don't have the numbers that we were having before, we are doing a lot better than expected. Um, and once again, don't beat yourself up about not having too many students. It's just, uh, it's, it's the times that we're in right now. And that's the reason why I asked that question because I, um, a lot, I, I, and I, I don't think I speak just for myself in, in this, but um, I think other uh, directors might want to feel a little bit more supported or feel like, okay, yeah, I only have 15 kids coming or 20 kids coming, but at least we're doing something and it's consistency, you know? Um, so that's why I asked the question so that I know other directors that are here in, in this um, training, they can see that, you know, we're doing the best we can with the tools that we have and, um, and we shouldn't beat ourselves. And the fact that we have some kids that are consistent, that, that, that shows that we're doing something good. So that's, that was the reason for my question. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. You're not alone, Michelle. Not <laughs> You're alone. not alone. <laughs> we cheered when we got the double digits. <laughs> we were elated when we got the double digits. And we've been double digits for a while now, but still, of course, it's not our norm because, you know, pre-COVID, we were triple digits, maybe. <laughs> so you're not alone. All efforts, I'm sure, are appreciated on all ends. So keep doing your best. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Uh, I have a quick question for you guys. Um, first off, thank you to everyone. Everyone was amazing, um, super informative. I have a quick question. I have been uh, in leadership for elementary age, actually, for a little over 10 years, and then I switched recently to middle school. Completely different structure. <laughs> uh, Elementary school is way more structured than high school is for after school, um, at least as far as, you know, uh, my program is concerned. So a question I have is, how do you guys um, get around? I guess this is um, more for uh, middle school side, but anyone feel free, please. Um, how do you get around, you know, there's a certain amount of hours, right, for <laughs> every subject. Um, there's a certain amount of hours for the kids to have. Um, or to achieve rather for the school year. How do you guys get around, let's say for example, a math club. Math club, we had eighth grade algebra going and it wasn't going so well. The kids don't really like math. So how do you get around in the system to say, hey, um, we have a math class, but you know we want to switch it to something else because technically we have to have you know a certain amount of hours for everything. So I don't know if that makes sense, but how do you get around in the system as far as us putting in you know, activities and attendance and so on? How do you get around the fact that um, we really don't want a math class anymore <laughs> or a math club anymore per se? Like how do you, you know, are there any tricks of the trade, I should say, to getting around to naming that topic in the system or just putting it under another kind of category? Um, so I'll say I, I yeah I have the the uh, academic classes are clearly the lowest classes um, that you have attendance in normally. Um, I before this worked with DYCD where you have to have a, the kids doing a certain amount of hours a week. So the way I got around that was I would tell the kids um, you can do anything you want as long as you have one class of leadership and one class of academic or you have one class, so it's, it's a give and take. Like, I know you don't really wanna do math, but right after math, you can do chess or you can do basketball or you can do whatever. Um, that's kind of an incentive to keep them coming. And um, virtually, right, like if they're not coming, they're not coming. We have science, um, but we turned it into more like half of the class is if anybody has science questions, any, any homework questions, any specific questions about science, you ask it in the first half, the second half of the class, they play games, they play science games, which makes it competitive, which makes them, you know, know that the whole class is not going to be someone lecturing to them about stuff that they just sat through during the day, because they just don't want to do it. Um, so you have to, you know, give a little bit more, more at that. So instead of doing straight algebra, um, you know, break it up and uh, give them something else to look forward to towards the end of the class. I would also add on to Shani's like what she was saying about roadblocks is like making it a STEAM club rather than like a science club. And when it's a STEAM or STEM club, then incorporating robots and that coding aspect 
um, leans it more towards that it becomes a computer science based uh, STEM club. You know what I mean? So there's really um, fun workarounds to incorporate some more activity based learning and something that's purely academic. Thank you guys so much. That makes so much sense. Um, I just want the kids to come in, be comfortable and learn and have fun <laughs> at the same time. Um, so thank you for that. I will definitely try to do STEAM. <laughs> Yeah. Erin, did you want to add to that? I mean, what Whitney and, and Shani said was pretty much nail on the head, but definitely just getting creative. Um, again, for elementary, I would do like shapes and and we're going to work on shapes. And then, you know, maybe if it's middle school, uh, cutting out shapes, but then um, the correct uh, Pythagorean theorem oh but it, you know just getting create or like even with basketball I actually had a colleague a couple years ago who did um, mathematic ma I forget what he called it but it was basically basketball, basketball and math put together basketball. so it's, it's really getting creative you know and oh. sitting down with the team you know, more than likely your answer is in the room. You don't have to do it by yourself. So just talk it out with other people. But yes, what Shani and Whitney said, yes. <laughs> There's a game called Math Hoops. <clears throat> I don't know if are anyone here is familiar and um, it's free. Um, you, you go, they, they do a training and they, they teach you how to play the game and it's, it's, it's fun. Um, and it's, it deals with math, but it, the kids don't, un, they don't realize that they're actually doing math because they, you're actually playing games and you, um, you know, you have the NBA, uh, NBA and WNBA players, you know, the cards, it's really cool. So, you know, if you guys, if anybody's interested in like doing different types of games, you can go to mathhoops.com, I believe. And, you know, you can just request to, to join and it's free and they give you about, uh, I think it's three games or four games for you to use in your program. And they also do like uh, tournaments that if your students become really good, you could pick students and they can go and play. And right now they're doing it um, online. So it's pretty cool. Oh, that sounds great. Well, thank you, Michelle and Melissa. Uh, any other questions from the group? Observations? Uh, Chantel says, can we get the information for that game? Uh, Michelle, I think you said it was mathhoops.com. I'm writing that. Mathhoops.com, I wrote that in the chat box. Um, all right, any other questions, observations, anything anyone wants to share? All right, well, thank you so much everyone for joining. Uh, we still have uh, about 10 or 15 minutes left. So um, what I'm gonna ask for you to do now is two things. Sign again your name and your organization into the chat before you go. Uh, that's, that's required from TARC. It's a way of signing in and signing out like you did at the beginning and now leaving. Um, and also please go to the link uh, at the, uh, for evaluations that you see there at the bottom of the, page, or at the screen and uh, fill out the evaluation for us. We'd really appreciate that. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And we hope that you find these, everything you learned today useful. And we are still here available for any questions if anything comes up. Oh no, Matt is frozen. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Um...
Matt. Wait, sorry. Just, okay. <laughs> it cut. I cut out. Sorry. I don't know. What was the last thing you heard me say? Oh, we were going to stick around if anyone had any questions, and the okay. forms are in the chat box. Okay, great. So I guess I at least said what I needed to say before it cut out. I'm not <laughs> sure what's going on with this computer today. Yeah, your picture is still frozen. Let it go. Wonderful, go. wonderful. Yeah. Well, at least you can hear me, so that, that's good. <laughs> yeah. It's a good freeze frame, Matt. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Is it just us left on here? I, I can't see anything. No, no. there are 37 oh. people still on. <laughs> All right. It's not, it's not a day for technology, I don't think, today. And your oh, computer is having trouble too, right, Shani? I, I have to call cartwheel today. I was about to have a whole meltdown.